Hey, it's time for discovering. Kristen was in Ishpeming for the 135th Annual Ski Jumping Tournament. There have been competitions at this site since 1926. And I spent some time ice fishing on Little Beatty Knock. Stick around, it's Monday night and time for discovering. The secret streams that flow beneath the cliffs of colored stone. Forest thick and healthy with birch and pine and oak. Surrounded by the greatest lakes this world has ever known. The black bear's awesome presence as he roams the hills and fields. The call of the timber wolf, the loon's lonesome trill. The eagle soaring high above, the trout lies deep and still. These are what I treasure. The only way I measure Feelings that I have for this fine land There is so much to discover When you're a long-time lover Of northern Michigan In the, In the track, track. And, and off, off the, the jump. jump. Beautiful. Ski jumping is a Nordic sport that has been around for over 200 years, with the first UP competition held in Ishpeming in 1887. That's 135 years of ski jumping here, almost 40 years before the first Winter Olympic Games. It's the original tailgate. I mean, consider the fact our first tournament was in 1887, which was before there were cars in Upper Michigan. And so the first tailgates were probably on a horse-drawn carriage. So tailgating at Lambeau follows us by several decades. The first regional and national ski jumping championships were held in Ishpeming. Today is the 135th annual ski jumping tournament of the Ishpeming Ski Club. We're at the UP Nordic Ski Complex. Also known as Suicide Hill. Well, Suicide Hill actually got its name from a guy who crashed on the very first jump on the hill in 1926. And a reporter from a newspaper said anybody who jumps that hill is committing suicide. The club never named it that, the community called it that. But there have been competitions at this site since 1926 and nobody has died. So we've had some real nice competitions. It's, it's very competitive, it's a world, cl world class facility and we're pretty excited about it. The UP Nordic Ski Complex has five hills. The competition tonight is on the K90, the largest jump here. This is a 90 meter ski jump, which in the Olympics is the Olympic normal hill. Well, we actually, there's two small hills right there, a 13 meter, which we've had three-year-old kids jump. The 25 meter is where a good eight-year-old will start skiing. Ski there till you're 10 or 12. Then right on the other end of the ski complex is a 40 meter. Uh, kids around 10 or 12 will start jumping that. That's where you get your first experience of air pressure and really get air carry. Maximum jump on that hill is close to 140 feet. So they start flying pretty far. And then next to here, we have a 60 meter where we jump about 230. The record on Suicide Hill is 335 feet. So it's longer than a football field. Hakey Lunta does its own thing. When you want snow, it doesn't snow. When you don't want it to snow, it snows. Like when you need the perfect track set and groomed for a ski jumping tournament. Well, it's been a blustery day. All morning it snowed. It actually snowed up until the last hour. And now we're clearing the snow off the inrun and recutting the track. We've got a winch cat on the landing. In ski jumping, you want to keep the surface hard and smooth. You want to keep it to the original profile. So when you get drift snow to be safe, it's got to come down to the hard surface. That's what we're doing right now. We're clearing the track out so it's back to the original track and the landing has to be firm and hard for a safe landing. <laughs> the 
This is the first time I've been to one of these and I know nothing about it other than brave souls launch themselves off a steep hill and into the air to see who can fly the furthest. And with the Winter Olympics coming up, now is a good time to learn how this sport works and how it's judged. Well, there's two components to win a ski jumping tournament. The first is distance. The further you jump, the more points you get. And the second is style. There are five style judges. When the jumper enters the air, he has 20 points from each judge and they get deductions for flaws. So a real good steady jump might get 17 or 18 points. And if somebody has some difficulties, they might get 12, 13 or 14 points. So the high and low score from each jump is thrown out. So they total three. So a perfect jump would get 60 points in style plus their distance points for two rounds. Top of the hill where the, the jumper shoves off is the in run. And you have to get in a, a real forward and aggressive in run position to pick up optimal speed and to be in a position to spring out fast and powerful. And from the in run, you go into your air flight you go over the knoll onto the landing and then you set what they call a telmark landing with one foot in front of the other. And that's part of your style points right there is to have a smooth jump with your skis together, not flapping in the wind, smooth and controlled all the way, arms by your side and not moving. And then to set a telmark landing with one foot in front of the other. Um, that will give you the optimal style points. Stopping area is the outrun. And what's behind us is the judges stand. So the five judges will stand here on the first floor. And then up above, I'm as the chief of competition, I've got a station where I'm watching the wind and monitoring the hill conditions and the wind. Also, I have a starter up there who starts a sequence of, of red, yellow, and green lights. It's, it, there's actually a stoplight on the hill. And the jumpers have a, a timing system where when you hit the the yellow, you go from red to yellow, they've got to get on the bar, then they've got 15 to 25 seconds, depending upon the weather, how we set the time. When the light turns green, they've got like 15 seconds to go or we DQ them. That's the takeoff and then this is the landing. The, the upper part is called the knoll. And then the landing ends at K point, which is 90 meters on this hill. And then the curve starts to flatten out to the outrun where you stop. Jumpers cruise at an average speed of 50 to 55 miles per hour. It takes roughly 12 seconds to get from the top of the in-run to the bottom of the out-run. Just like three or four of it in the air. <laughs> Due to weather conditions, the tournament started about two hours late, but that did not deter the crowd. show did go on. My name is Ronan Woods. I'm from Anchorage, Alaska, and we're jumping Suicide Hill, and I'm super happy to be here. Just had a super great jump, and yeah. I went 84, and just got super stacked over the knoll. Kept, kept my height and took it down to the bottom. How'd they go? Um, it was all right. Uh, first round, we were clearing the track because we're the more experienced skiers, so we wanted to make sure it was safe for everybody. Um, and then our first round of competition was a lot of fun. Um, going to hear if the hill's going to be in good enough condition to go for another one, but yeah, it's 
perfect night to ski jump, a lot of fun. Absolutely, a lot of hill pressure, the track's in better condition, and the first trial round jump was more of like a feeler jump, and then we got right into a little bit further flying, and trying to get better, so. Neither of us thought our jumps were that good, but um, you know, hopefully we'll have another chance to prove it and go up there and have a better one. Unfortunately, they did not get in that last round. Weather conditions made the track unfit to jump. That's winter in the UP. No matter where you live in the UP, you don't have to travel far to find a place to ice fish for one species or another. On this trip, walleye was on the menu. And for that, I hooked up with Mag Mills for a day on the frozen waters of Little Beatty Knock. Okay. Baby knock all the way. Well, today we we're ice fishing. We're out here on Little Baby Knock, uh, targeting walleye. We got I got my two line or two tip ups out for my extra lines, and uh, we're jigging right now in 38.8 feet of water. We're hoping that these walleye are going to be coming off the shallows up here and down this break to the bottom side. I mean, you might get some perch, you might get some pike, but Hopefully, uh, get some on the jig stick. He'll come up and hit it again. Maybe he's upset Yes, sir. A little bit better. It definitely would be a keeper, but I got enough walleye at home, I don't need them. I, on the other hand, don't have enough at home. So unfortunately for this walleye, he was destined for the pan. Here's using a number five digging wrap. He'll catch a little bit smaller fish on him, but you can also get bigger ones. Of course, we also had some tip-ups out in the ice. The unique thing about tip-ups is that you never know what you're going to catch, or not catch. After a couple of close calls, success. This one's definitely got a fish on. Just like a three, four inch uh, sucker minnow. And uh, we're set up over here. This is about 40 feet of water. And I don't know what time it is. It's almost nine o'clock. So these fish are coming up out of these shallows, coming back off the break and in the deeper water for the most part. But it's a good, healthy fish. I'm not keeping this one, but put her back in and let her go back down whenever she feels like it. Goes. And so with these jigging wraps, I get three inch shiner minnows and basically just hook them right in the head and you pinch half of it off so then when you're jigging it, well in the water, this will be kind of swaying back and forth and just gives it that little bit more action and the scent for the fish and it makes them commit a little bit more to uh, hitting it. I don't think he's very big. Not very big, but... Okay.
I'm just using a, a 10 pound mono. Uh, a lot of the guys uh, run straight braid to a swivel and then use a floral leader from the braid because otherwise this mono you get a lot of stretch in the line and I've missed a couple fish just probably because of that stretch because we're so deep. If you're out jigging outside the shack that that braid tends to freeze up some it accumulates a lot of water so I like running just a straight mono and I'm jigging with a, a medium heavy it's a mags custom rod it's the only rod I'll use ice fishing and he's local he's right from Gwynn but these are awesome rods I've caught a lot of fish on them I love the way they, they, they work and you can get them all sorts of custom colors I got this one all orange the mags grip it's almost like a more rubbery grip As the sun moved across the sky, the walleyes moved up into the flats as predicted. And the action moved outside to the tip-ups. Comes a walleye. A few quick tip-ups to finish off the day. I think that's a little... Like a nice healthy fish. Switched up, we're in 28 feet of water now, so these fish are gonna be rolling through this flat that we're on and uh, heading up to the shallow water to feed at night. We're gonna catch one our way through. They're smaller fish. The other half of my dinner? Yeah, Could be. Maybe. Mm. They're a nice baity knock all eh? Well, our day on the ice came to a close. I left having had a great day of fishing and some relaxing time hanging out in an ice shack. Oh yeah, and a few walleyes for the pan. You probably figured out by now that that's one of my favorite parts about fishing especially since I spend most of it with a camera in my hand instead of a fishing rod. And yes, those walleyes did end up in a pan. I'll leave you with just a little taste. <laughs>